In previous videos, I've mentioned that it is quite possible to achieve dynamics on a harpsichord, and I've even mentioned some of the ways that one can do that. In this video, I would like to demonstrate how to do that, how to achieve dynamics on the harpsichord by playing a piece and showing you the different ways that one can do that. Now, as a very, very brief recapitulation of what I have said before, um, the way of achieving dynamics on the harpsichord, first of all, has to do with how you pluck the string. So you can pluck it a little more gently, or you can pluck it a little more harshly, and this will actually create very, very subtle dynamic changes. The other thing, and I would say probably the most important way of achieving dynamics on a harpsichord, is by using the instrument's resonance. And there are several interrelated ways of doing this. Obviously, the way you pluck the string is also important in this regard, but other ways of using the resonance of a harpsichord has to do with how you play chords. And I've mentioned before that when you look at chords in especially Baroque music, they may be notated as block chords. However, you can create an infinite variety of arpeggiations that can range from playing the notes almost at the same time to a much wider kind of arpeggiation. And this can alter the resonance of the harpsichord, the response of the harpsichord. Um, other ways of working with the instrument's resonance has to do with not playing everything at the same time, delaying certain notes to create tension, and another technique that I will also show today, over legato. Over legato here meaning that when you have a passage of notes, you kind of hold one note over the other ones as you play. So if, for example, you have something like this, over legato would be And I hope you can already notice that there is a difference here. When I use over legato, I taper off the sound a little bit. So this is this versus the final F sounds a little louder if I don't use over legato simply because it sticks out, it's on its own. But when I use the resonance of the harpsichord and I hold down the other notes, this creates a slightly louder sound and this helps to taper off the sound as we're getting towards the end of that passage. Now, before we go any further, I should say here that when you use this technique of over legato, one still has to be very careful not to create long legato phrases because especially in Baroque music, we're still dealing with very short phrases that usually consist of two, three, and four notes. So it's very important to create that over legato effect within these short phrases, but make sure that you don't necessarily extend it beyond that. Now, what I wanted to do and how I want to demonstrate this um, over legato and also how to create dynamic contrast on the harpsichord is by looking at a particular piece. This is the Almond from Georg Böhm's Eighth Suite in F minor. This is a piece that I just recently started working on, so it's definitely not yet in perfect, shall we say, performing order. However, I think I can show you there are a couple of passages that I think are, are very, very good examples of what one can achieve. So I wanted to use this piece for that purpose, and I hope you will excuse some imperfections as I play it for you. Now, since this is a piece that is not very well known, the first thing I want to do is actually play it. Um, like all dance music pretty much of that time, it's in two sections, two very short sections, and I will also play each section without repeats so that we don't have to take too long with this, but you can get an idea of what the piece sounds like. Notice that all of these things that I'm mentioning, the idea of delaying certain notes, not playing hands together, using all sorts of different arpeggiations when it comes to chords, and also using over legato in certain passages, is going to create 
the expressive content of this piece. And after I play it, then I'm going to concentrate on a couple of passages and I will also play the piece in a non-expressive way. So first, um, as I said, I'm, I've only started playing this a few days ago, so please forgive any imperfections. So this is the piece, both sections, no repeats. So this is what the piece sounds like. And now let me concentrate on a couple of passages from the second section. One of them is the one that um, is about the middle of the second section. And if you play both hands, uh, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> And you notice there with the right hand, I use this technique of over legato. Now, if I isolate the right hand, notice that there is a difference depending on whether I do this over legato or not. So here is the passage, just the right hand played over legato. And if I don't do that, It does, you don't have that kind of tapering off of the sound. Once more. I think there is a very, very clear difference there. Um, the other one that I wanted to play, the other passage, is the very, very end of this, and it's the final F major chord. And notice again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually hold the notes of the chord, and this is going to provide a tapering off of the high F, but it is also going to taper off a little bit the low F. And in my particular harpsichord, um, this range, and this is actually something that I like, tends to be a little unruly, uh, which means that if you want to create this kind of tapering off, it's a little bit more difficult. I like that. However, I have to work in a different way than I would be working on another harpsichord. And this, of course, really does bring here the notion that harpsichords are very different from one another. So what I'm doing here with this instrument may not work exactly the same way on a different instrument. So here is now this, this F major chord. And notice again this tapering off effect that I create by holding down the notes. If I don't do that, it sounds harsher and the, both the upper F and the lower F sound louder. So I hope you can see that there is a difference when you use these kinds of techniques. It actually does make a difference 
a dynamic difference so that you can create these dynamics. They're subtle, but they're definitely there. And I would say that if you don't use these techniques, then you are actually going to miss something very, very, very important. Um, just as a demonstration, I want to play the second section and I want to try to play it as strictly and literally as I can. No holding notes, no arpeggiation of chords, no delaying of any sort, simply what I see on the page. And I will also play with a slightly harder touch so that you can see that if you don't use, if you don't pluck in a softer way, but you pluck everything kind of harshly, then that really translates into a harsher sound, which can be useful depending on the piece, but I don't feel that it really fits with this particular uh, piece that I'm playing. So here's a literal interpretation of um, the second section of this Almond. slightly more musical version. I'm sorry I didn't do that passage that I was demonstrating. I didn't do it as well when I played it, but I hope you've heard it enough times now that you know what is possible to be done with it. So this is the little demonstration about dynamics on the harpsichord. Once more, I want to say that because harpsichords are not standardized instruments and each one of them has very different characteristics, each instrument has its own unique and special resonance. And this means that as a performer, you have to kind of listen to the instrument and see what kinds of information it gives you and then act accordingly. However, please don't believe if anyone tells you from now on that harpsichords cannot do dynamics. Uh, this is simply not true. Um, if they can't do dynamics, either they're not very good instruments or far more likely, the person who plays it doesn't know how to play the instrument properly. As always, thank you for watching.